Hey, it's Joel, and I come to you in a time of pride and of sadness. I'm proud of Sean for following his dreams and passion, but I'm sad because it means Sean is moving back to Michigan. I love you, dude! Will this handheld scanner allow me to scan Sean and print him out so he's always here with me? Well, let's find out. Right here on 3D Printing Nerd. In my hands, I'm holding the Calibri from Thor 3D. Boy, that's a mouthful. They let me borrow it for a bit. A big thanks to them because this is really cool. This is what's known as a structured light scanner. And it's, it's called a structured light scanner because, well, according to Wikipedia, it's a 3D scanning device for measuring the three-dimensional shape of an object using projected light patterns and a camera system. The Calibri right here has both the ability to project these light patterns and the ability to see them with a built-in camera. Now all I need is a three-dimensional shape that Wikipedia speaks of. Thankfully, we have Sean, and Sean is our three-dimensional shape. Big shout out for you for existing in three dimensions, Sean. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> Also, it's true, Sean will be packing up his things and moving back to Michigan. He has found a passion to follow, and doing it from his home state is the best option. Don't worry, though. The edits around here will still be Sean-powered thanks to the internet and the ability to transfer a large number of ones and zeros across wide distances rather quickly. Of course, uh, Sean's internet here in the Seattle area, unfortunately, we call it potato internet, just so you know. It's so slow. <laughs> We'll talk to Sean and we'll talk about that a little bit later, but for now, I have a plan. Both people in my team will soon be remote workers. I already have a scan of David from our trip to Thingergy last year. Frank had each of us step into a scanning booth and, and we each got a scan. Now with this handheld scanner, right here, I'll get a scan of Sean. Then I will print each of them out and I'll have David and Sean here with me in Seattle. It's kind of sad, but honestly, this is the best plan ever. Let's get to it. The Calibri is packed well, and getting it out of the box was an absolute breeze. It uses a USB 3 cable to connect to this power box. I imagine this scanner requires more power than what it can draw over USB. From the box is a USB 3 cable right to your computer. The scanner uses software called Calibri Nest, and I installed it on a laptop. Scanning first starts with a preview and some important information, as in how many frames per second can be scanned. Pressing the start button makes scanning begin. Scanning happens in a zone not too close and not too far away. It's almost like a Goldilocks zone, though instead of hot porridge, it's space. The colors on the scanner screen tell you when you're green and just right. When scanning is done, just hit the stop button. A cloud of data is generated. With Sean's scan, generating four gigs of data points. I'm large. Calibri Nest is able to crunch that data into somewhat of a usable mesh. Tools within the software allow you to edit the mesh so you can take things away that you don't need or repair holes that exist in the mesh. And then you can export that saved result, that saved mess, that saved mess, it's almost a mess, that saved mesh as an OBJ. From there, it's loaded into slicing software. And for me, that was the Prusa slicer software. And printing happens on the Prusa SL1 resin 3D printer. Hi, Sean. How you doing, David? I'm doing good, Sean. How you doing, Sean? Doing good, David. All that's said and done. Now all that's left to do is show you the prints. Look at these. That's Sean and that's David. And these were printed on the Prusa SL1 in Prusa Tough Orange resin. Uh, I think it was printed at the default 0 0.05 for normal, so 0 0.05 millimeter layers. Eh, go figure. There were supports and stuff that I cleared off, but uh, these look fantastic. So first, here's what I want to do. I want to take a look at David's scan. So the scan that David was a part of, it was a scanning booth, and there's dozens of cameras around. And it's almost, I believe it uses photogrammetry to then take a bunch of pictures and then from that create the 3D model. And what's great about that sort of thing is the pictures happen like that. And so your subject isn't moving around a bunch and it can capture a moment in time really quickly. And so with David, that's what happened. And uh, David's scan I think looks great 
It captured his hair brilliantly. I didn't think anything would be able to capture that dude's hair, but legit, it captured it. One of the things that I thought was really interesting though, so if you look at the feet, it's interesting because the scanning booth at Fingergy is calibrated for face, hair, upper body, legs, torso, arms, hands, everything up there. Not a lot of attention is paid to the feet because typically for something like that, they, if you needed to get a foot, a foot model in order to model something on top of, you wouldn't use that sort of scanning technique. And so the feet on David are unfortunately a big giant mess, but it doesn't matter. And so within Prusa Slicer, I was able to add an oval base, two and a half millimeters tall, and then I set the model on there. So that way, little David could walk around and, and do fun things that David likes to do. He's in California, so he likes the sun and surfing and bicycling and eating healthy. Now let's talk about Sean's scan. Because of how we scanned Sean, we used this handheld scanner. I was able to achieve great detail, but it meant Sean had to stand still for a number of minutes. And I know that depending on the subject matter you're scanning, that can't always be the case. Whereas Frank's scanning booth could scan, for example, a pet dog. Whereas with this, there's no way a dog would be able to stand still enough for me to get an image properly. But thankfully, Sean's not a dog. Sean stood still and it came out with this. And I thought the detail is fantastic. If you look, you can see the drawstrings on his hoodie. You can see the thumbs. Can you see the thumbs? Yeah. Yeah, you can see Sean's thumbs right there. And uh, I am, I'm excited. So one of the interesting things though, because of how this works and it, it's, it shines like this, if I wanna get under something, I have to do that. And that's what I tried to do with Sean's backward facing cap. But because it wasn't able to capture the entire area, it was a hole and within the Calibri Nest software, I was able to repair the hole. So if you see, there's almost like a, there's a part where there's this, this angled piece and it's almost like the head joins the hat as, as one solid piece. That happened because the information wasn't there and so within Calibri Nest, I said, fix the hole. And so what it does is it just creates geometry to cover that hole in the best way possible or the quickest way possible or the most logical way possible. Either way, it attached Sean's head to his hat. But I don't think it detracts from this model. I think it's good. The other thing, I mean, there's, there's his Costanza wallet. Look at this thing. It's, it's huge. You're going to need a spinal adjustment in a few it, years, my yeah, friend. That's correct. Now, though, let's talk about the feet. And unlike the feet on David's model, Sean's feet came out exceptionally well. And again, it's because I was able to pay more attention to them with this scanner. I purposefully was able to point it down and get a lot of data about the foot and that reproduced in the model incredibly well. It's not perfect, and I did have to spend some time cleaning up the model just a little bit, but I think it did a great job. I mean, I can tell that you're wearing tennis shoes, man. That's correct. And in fact, uh, I can see your laces on that one. Oh, wow. And again, I did a two and a half millimeter base on yours because uh, I just want you to be able to stand there. One of the interesting things, if the mesh doesn't line up, it's almost like you were walking too fast. You know, it's like a, it's like a, a, a trail, an image trail, because you're just, you're Naruto running so fast that we can't see you. <laughs> that I could have cleaned up within the software itself. And the software, when you're cleaning up meshes in software, the Calibri Nest works, but so does Mesh Mixer, and I think Fusion 360, and ZBrush, and there's tons of other pieces of software that you can use to, to clean up meshes and scans. This is just, yeah, a, a mesh. This is just data, and so you just have to play with it. And there we go. I think Sean's model looks pretty great. I mean, look at him, he's all, I like cold and snow and Michigan and talk to the hand, because that's how you find out where you're in Michigan. Wow. Is that, is that accurate? <laughs> I mean, yeah, you, yep, you got it. I really like this. Honestly, I was apprehensive, to say the least, when they sent over this scanner for me to play with. My first foray into 3D scanning was less than optimal, let's say, and the audience let me know. Since then, I've learned quite a bit, and I did take a little bit of training with Thor 3D. They did a, a Skype call with me for a half hour and kind of gave me the, the quick overview. Along with the videos that they have on their website, I was able to get it working. We tried doing calibration. That didn't work, but according to the website, you don't have to, it's optional. But there are three different tracking modes for scanning. There is geometry, which is what we used. There's 
texture, which we could have used, and we may try to play with that a little bit before Sean takes off, but there's also marker based, and that's where you want to scan a wall or something shiny or something large, and those markers are going to help the scanner keep track of where it is in space, which will then make assembling the mesh easier, which is great. Calibri Nest, the software that this uses, isn't optimized for high-end PCs. Anytime we had to make the mesh better, or we had to compute the mesh, or whatever, whatever the right word is, uh, it took a long time. Sean's scan on my laptop took 43 minutes. <laughs> Whew. And again, this is me not knowing exactly the right way or the most efficient way to do things, but remember, it did work. It did work and it produced this. So I'm really excited about this and I'm, I'm hoping they let me borrow it for a little while longer because there's a couple other things I'd really love to scan. If you have any ideas for things that I can scan, leave them in the comments down below and I'll see what I can do. And then uh, some of these models that I make from these scans, I'll put them online. I'll talk to my Patreon supporters as well and maybe make them uh, some, some special scans too. We'll see what happens. But at this point, I'm going to invite Sean over because, oh. Oh. <laughs> because uh, Sean's moving. I so am. we will we'll still have Sean as editor, but uh, and well and we'll have Sean as a as a little dude. But uh, but Sean's moving back home to follow his passion. And so Sean, the floor is yours. You get to close this one out. Oh, that's terrible. <laughs> Uh, I want to just give a really big thanks to everyone who supported me uh, coming out here, who um, uh, the, the nice comments I get about editing, about shooting or, or whatever it is. Like, th thank you so much for that. I really appreciate it. Um, uh, I, I've had a passion. I've had a fire lit in me and uh, I'll get into more details about that. I'm sure later. So you're I, going back to school. I'm going, I am going back to school for it. It's going to be fun. It's going to be fun. <laughs> I'm 30, going to be 34 years old in school. That'll, that'll, so that'll, old. That'll, that'll be great. That'll be great. <laughs> So if you follow my progress, you can go to, uh, if you follow me on Twitter, it's at the Sean Connolly, um, or Instagram is Sean M. Connolly, I believe. We should, you should come back over here so, we, right. could, so we could, so we could. You, know, you, gotta you want me to help close it out? Yeah, you got to close it out. It's your video. You got to okay. close it out. Okay. You got to close it out. Your yeah, elbow. There you go. Social Safe. distance. We'll yeah. go get some lunch. Yeah. <laughs> if you've made it this far, you're awesome. A big thanks for all your support, and we wish Sean well. Now we're going to get some lunch, and we're really hungry, so... Don't forget to hug each other more when it's safe and appropriate. <laughs> and from a safe distance, high five. High five. <laughs> Good job, Sean. Well, geez, you brought me over here. That's, yeah, see? Uh, see yeah. Oh, oh, hey, yeah. Sean, I'm oh, David. Uh, well, you know my this, name, I'm Sean. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's good. This is really fun. I really like this video. This is, this is a lot of fun. Why aren't you surfing, or why, 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 aren't, you, why aren't you at the gym, or... <laughs> Oh, that's right, you can't right now. <laughs> I work out from home and I eat healthy, Sean. Look at these guns. Look at these. Look at these. <laughs>